Hey guys, Mr. Clark here, and this week we will be studying the rock cycle. Funny thing is rocks don't even go in a circle, so why is it even called a rock cycle? One of the reasons we study the rock cycle is because it's another great example of how our planet Earth is constantly changing. After this module, you should be a mini geologist equipped with all the skills necessary to identify just about any rock type you come across and appreciate how incredible our world really is. So our learning objectives for this module is that Earth is constantly changing. Matter, including rocks, is constantly cycling within the Earth. And because the Earth is dynamic and always changing, the surface of the Earth is also always changing. During this module, we're going to focus particularly on the rock cycle because it's a great example of how Earth is constantly changing. And we're going to describe the relationship between the forces and processes that create each rock type, including igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. So before we really get into it, in previous modules, we learned all about Earth's resources. Well, a lot of those resources include minerals, ores, and fossil fuels, and how those minerals and ores are produced has a lot to do with the rock cycle. And in the last module, we learned about weathering and erosion and deposition. Those processes actually ultimately create a particular kind of rock that we're going to learn about. So the main idea is basically there are three large classifications of rocks, igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks. These are typically classified by how they're formed. Rock formation is a great way to classify any type of rock that we find on the surface of the earth, because any rock that you would find is created in one of these three ways. So here are some key terms that we're going to discuss during this presentation. There are different types of igneous rock. You need to know the difference between magma and lava and sedimentary rocks involve many processes um, that are going to ultimately create sediments that are broken down from weathering into an actual rock. Let's start with igneous rocks. It's a great place to start. Basically, lava can erupt out of a volcano and cool down and harden into stone. Now, when melted rock reaches the surface, it's called lava. But if melted rock is below the surface, it's called magma. Now, what's interesting is if lava cools down fast, like it erupts out of a volcano and it cools down relatively quickly, it's called extrusive. And I remember that by exit. And what happens is, is it creates how the atoms are actually bonded together when it cools down rapidly, alters its structure and creates different kinds of rocks. So an example would be obsidian or basalt. And what's even more interesting is if this actually cools down under the ground, we have more crystal formation. So if the magma actually cools down kind of slow, you'll see more crystals. So there are two types of igneous rocks, extrusive when it exits and reaches the surface and cools down fast, and slow cooling when it cools down more slowly underneath the surface. Another type of rock is metamorphic. Metamorphic means basically change, and it is changed by intense heat and pressure. So what happens is, is as rock layers pile on top of each other, you have all this pressure. I mean, just layer after layer after layer, it will, it will just, just like if you got buried in the sand at the beach, you know, imagine if you were just buried like miles under the ground, it would just be incredible pressure. But then you also have heat from the center of the earth. That's kind of like making it gooey or more liquidy. And it's just pushing this rock and creating new rock. So when rock layers experience intense heat and pressure from various forces, you could create metamorphic rocks. The next type of rock we're going to learn about are sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are created when uh, rocks are weathered. And you can see here we got, there's a lot of ways you could weather rock that we learned about in previous modules. But let's say you have larger rocks broken down into littler rocks called sediments. Those sediments will be eroded and transported and moved 
and then ultimately dumped, like for example here, it's dumped into the ocean, and those sediments will ultimately be compacted and cemented together, basically just squashed into a rock. And as you can see here, all the little sediments are just smashed into a stone. You even see the layers here. So sedimentary rocks, or when igneous rocks or metamorphic rocks have been weathered, transported, the sediments are deposited and compacted and cemented together into stone. So is the rock cycle really a circle? I'd like to make the argument that it really isn't. Um, any rock could become any other type of rock and there really is no one direction to it. So when any rock undergoes uh, the process that creates the other type of rock, it will become that kind of rock. So igneous could become metamorphic, metamorphic could become sedimentary, sedimentary could become another sedimentary rock. So the rocks on Earth's surface are not going in a circle and it is ongoing process. It never ends because matter in the universe is not created or destroyed. It's just constantly changing and the rock cycle is a great example of that. All right, so what I'd like to show you here is how all rocks can change into other types of rocks and the rock cycle is not necessarily a circle. So at the end of this, it will look rather complicated, but the point is really that all rocks can turn into other types of rocks and they don't go in a circle. So I'll start here at Volcano. Let's say rocks cool down rapidly when it's erupted out of a volcano. Well, now those rocks from a volcano could get weathered into sediments and those sediments could become compacted and cemented into a sedimentary rock. Now that we have a sedimentary rock, those rocks could ultimately become melted again. And then maybe this time after it cools down, it cools down slowly under the ground. Well, those rocks could ultimately be heated and pressured into a metamorphic rock and a metamorphic rock could become melted again. But what I really want you to know is that all rocks could become any other type of rock. Well, a metamorphic rock could be reheated and repressured into another metamorphic rock or a different kind. A metamorphic rock could be weathered, eroded, and become sediments. And then a sedimentary rock could be heated and pressured into a metamorphic rock. And, uh, you know, uh, igneous rock could become sediments. So really, an igneous rock could become a different kind of igneous rock. An igneous rock could become metamorphic. An igneous rock could be sedimentary. So every rock type should have three connections. I got sedimentary to metamorphic. Sedimentary could become sediments again and then become a new sedimentary rock. And a sedimentary rock could become an igneous rock. All rock types can become not only a new rock type of itself, but also the other two rocks. So all three should have three connections. And all I'm really trying to demonstrate in this here is that they're not necessarily going in a circle. Whatever those rocks experience, the processes that create them, it will ultimately become a new rock type. If you guys said choice C, you are correct, because if we take a closer look at this, erosion, deposition, and cementation, rock one is a sedimentary rock. And if we look at the processes that create rock number two over here, we see that melting and cooling creates igneous rock. And anytime you have temperature or heat and pressure, you're creating metamorphic rock. So really the clues are the processes that create them. And if you learn those processes well, you'll understand the rock cycle. I also wanna highlight how good this diagram is because it shows how each rock type could become not only itself, but each other type of rock, and it's not necessarily going in a circle. So in conclusion, there are three large classifications of rocks, igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. They are constantly changing from one form to the other, and they don't necessarily go in a cycle. There are many different types of rock cycles, and they are all extremely helpful to help you determine which rock type is being transformed into another rock type. I hope this presentation was helpful and I'll see you guys next time.